um, else if here key is equal to 208 then select is equal to select plus one now this looks pretty good and we'll have an end there but there's actually one big thing that's missing here the thing is that what happens if I hit the up key and I'm already on selection number one it'll go up to zero and then to negative one to negative two negative three and those aren't real options so we have to make sure we restrict it so we have to go and select is less than uh, is greater than one so that way when I reduce it it will stop and it won't let me do this if the key is greater than one we're gonna do the same thing here and select is less than three now three I, you can say select is less than three, but that's actually not good enough. The reason for that is because my, if you go back and we look at our previous code, we're going to CD SLN, we're going to go menus. If you look here, this has got three options, correct, but this one doesn't. This one only has two options. Your menus might have different numbers of options. It's silly to think they should have the same number of options. That's much too much of a restriction. So how do we deal with that issue? Um, the way is actually is quite clever. Remember, the number of options you've got in each individual menu stored in this options list. So the length of that list is the number of options you've got available. And that's what we're going to use here. Now this is a lengthy statement, so just bear with me here. It's going to be the number of we're going to go menus, actually we don't need the bracket. It's just going to be menus uh, M-O-P-T I think it is. Is it M-O-P-T? Yep, M-O-P-T If we get the index of the currently active menu state dot op options and that will give us essentially the number um, of options in the selected menu state inside the MOPT menu so just do that through with you now just check through it so the MOPT um, array so the MOPT table um, when we check our menu state is equal to mains we just check our main and you can see main has got options what's the length of options and you can count it right there it's three and that will give us that number there directly if we have more than one like MOPT it'll use those numbers instead so that's the cleverness behind that statement so that way we'll only get one through to three okay now unfortunately we can't test that right now because there's no way to see that working at the moment we have to find some way of coding a visible selection into our code so let's take a look back at our draw main we're going to need to add something that looks like this. But where do we put it? That's the question. We want it to be essentially that if the select is equal to 1, it should be at 9. If the select is at 2, it should be equal to 13. And select is at 3, it should be equal to H. So how do we do that? We're probably going to have to do some sort of uh, an if-else statement here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call this local ypos is equal to, we're going to specify starting at 9, now if select is equal to 2, then ypos is equal to 13, and else if select is equal to 3, then ypos is equal to h, and just like that. And then once we've done this easily, it's just a matter of then changing this to ypos. And that will then print that out for us nicely. Okay, cool, that should be enough. So now we should be able to see this working. Let's see if it's going to work for us. A lot has been added, so there's probably going to be a few errors. And there have been, so let's edit uh, menus. So it looks as though an EOF probably means that I'm missing an end statement somewhere. Mm, don't think so. No, that's okay. Ah, uh, yes, I have. I've actually added one too many ends here, so just remove that there. We can go menus, okay, edit menus, and the thing that I've been forgetting all evening is now that we've having uh, we've gotten rid of the previous call, we have to add that run menu program here. So let's just go run menu. Oops, uh, not thinking. Sorry about this. Menus better edit menus. Okay, we've got a line 50 simply called nil. So let's go to line 50 and see what's happening. I'll be back in just a minute. I'll need to be able to see the line. I'm just to fix this up. Hi, sorry about that. I've just done a quick debug and I figured out some of the issues I was having. First off, um, the select variable that I had beforehand, that should actually be near the top of the code so the um, draw menu can access it. The reason that I was calling null is because it's actually draw header and draw main rather than print header and print main. And besides that, I think everything else is looking alright. Oh, just one tiny thing. Um, this 
here, the statement here where I mentioned selection through the my posture to h minus 1, not equal to h, because that's one too far down. Anyway, I do realize I'm running a little bit over time. I do apologize for that, so I will try and wrap this up as quick as I can. So let's just quickly show you what we've got so far. So now you can see we can move up and down like that, and we're stopping at the bottom and at the top, so that's covering nicely. The enter key does nothing, so let's do the enter key next. So this shouldn't hopefully take too long. We'll see how we go. So. Okay, when we've got an enter key, first off, let's do a very, very quick test. Now, if mopt menu state dot options select sorry I don't need the number there I'm copying that too closely okay so if the option within the given memory state menu state of the selection that I've currently made is equal to quit that is to say, if I've selected the quit option in any of my menu states, then I want to break end. That way, it'll just break me out of the loop directly, and that'll end just end the program for me. Otherwise, we don't need to worry about an else here, because that'll be fine. In, in any other instance, we have to change the new menu state. So how do we do that? It's very easy. We just go menu state is equal to mopt menu state dot options select. Like that. Just the same statement as I had just above there. So that will now replace the old menu state with the new one. So now we'll be using, for example, if I just like to pick one, it'll then change me to the pick one menu state. If I just like to the pick two menu state, it'll take me to the pick two menu state. If I select the main, it'll take me to the main menu state. That's what that statement will do. What value is that? Well, now we can actually make use of this lovely struct that we've just produced here to do some more interesting things. So, for example, how do we want to draw um, each individual option? Because you can see that each function is going to have to have its own draw method, right? It's clear enough because the main menu will have its own main menu display, pick one will have its own pick one display, pick two will have its own pick two display. So what I'm actually going to do, and this is quite clever again, we're going to replace the draw main, which I've got at the current bit of the loop, with a function pointer, which I'm going to have stored in here. So we're going to have what's going to be called the draw, and this is actually going to be a pointer directly to a function, and this is going to be equal to draw main, like that. So that's just going to store the function um, as a pointer directly inside my storage, or whatever Lua calls its references to functions anyway. It's, it's a variable that points to the function in any event. And now here, you can see where we've got draw main. We actually don't need this anymore. We can now replace this with the much more elegant. We can go m opt menu state dot draw like that. And that's pretty clever. That's really nice. Now when we try this, and hopefully this will work. Okay, it doesn't. And menus fifty nine. What have I? Done? I'm missing an end somewhere. Uh, it's because I've got an end here, I think. Yes, that'll be a bad place to have an end. Better. So now, watch this. The quit will now take me directly out of the application. That's looking great. And more than that, if I hit picture one, I'm hoping for a null error. That's a null error. That's exactly what you want to see. So it's tried to draw and it's absolutely failed. That's exactly what we're after. So that's really good. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to go away for a couple more minutes. I'm actually going to write in the new functions. Because you can see, the process now is actually a really easy one. All we have to do is just add a few more MOPT statements with their own options and their own draw methods. So I'll just do that, won't take me too long, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. And I'm back, hopefully for the last time, so let's go back to edit menus and I'll just show you what I've changed. Now the changes I've made are actually quite small. So um, where I have my draw method here beforehand, I've just added two new methods, draw pick one for the pick one method here. And this is just a simple rook. This is just from my chess game that I did a while back. Here I'm just printing each line inside a nice table for my rook here. And then I'm doing the same thing I had beforehand, exactly the same in the, in the main menu here. Um, just printing out two menu options and just changing between them. And then pick two, which is, um, it may not look like it for the second, but there's actually a bishop there, and that'll actually just um, do exactly the same thing. Nothing nothing different there. Now, the change I've made here, you can see here that I've added two new keys, pick one and pick two. They must be the same as in the options, so these, these keys must match, otherwise the whole thing won't work, of course, that that's how they relate to one another. And pick two is accessing... It's, sorry, pick one is accessing pick two and main, and vice versa for pick one. And now I've just added the function for draw pick one and draw pick two here as well, so they point that directly. So that means they're called by this function here, this draw function. That's all there is. Nothing else in the core of the program has changed. I've just added entries to this menu, and I've just added a few new functions for drawing. But when we, the, the big thing behind this is now, actually, when we go menus, you'll see 
when I hit the enter key, it's now changing to that new state. It's doing the new draw menu, it's now checking to allow me to um, move between these new options. And because the options has got a hard number inside the menu list, it means it won't let me go past two or above one. And that's working really nicely. So now I can go to picture two, exactly the same case here, and you see it does look like a bishop. <laughs> and back again, and that's working really nicely. And now I can quit. And there we go. Now I'm just going to do one last thing before I'm reckon we're done with this. Is this is how you want your program to end? Really, you want to have just that nice clear view, don't you? You don't want that that messiness um, that you, that gets left over when you finish writing running a program. It looks like it's crashed, to be honest. So how do we make that look nice, a little bit cleaner? It's very simple. All we have to do is at the very end of our program, because once this once this is broken from the quit menu, all it'll do is it'll just run to the next line here, and anyway, if it just ends. Now we can just go term dot clear like this and then turn dot set cursor pause one comma one. Now we've been using the, the other methods this whole time, but it'll just set that to the top left corner of the screen and then of course the OS will then draw out the um, the directory and we'll be done. So now let's just quickly test that. Menus and quit. And that there you are, and that's really quite pleasant. So there you are. This is this is graphical menu systems as we are. I won't ram for too much longer because I know it's it's this has gotten far too long. But um, you can see here that this of course can be adapted to anything that you want. Of course, I'll provide the code. I'm very very happy to share that. Um, but do have a go at writing this. Make sure you understand the the concepts behind it, the tables and stuff, because um, it allows for very very flexible interfaces and it really can add a real layer of polish to your applications, which can be hard to add otherwise. As, again, as a stress. Um, Nowadays we have, you know, with things like you know Windows 7 and, and your Macintosh OS and stuff like that, we have these beautiful, wonderful interfaces, and it's very hard to do that on the command line. So everything that you can do to try and make it just look a little bit more special can really make your users appreciate your software and make it feel that much more polished. And that's one of the keys to good software development. So anyway, um, give that a shot. Best of luck with everything. I hope you find it very, very useful. If you have any problems with the tutorial, I'm not surprised. Um, but yeah, um, I'll try to explain anything I can through any comments or emails that you leave. So. Thanks again, best of luck.